Hi, welcome to Daily Zohar. Welcome to Live Kabbalah. So we're continuing our discussion from yesterday uh, where we talked about the, uh, the meeting of Rabbi Elazar, the son of Rabbi Shimon, and his grandfather, Rabbi Pinchas, that they met in the middle of the road somewhere in the beautiful Upper Galilee, which we could see right over here from, um, from my view. And Rabbi Pinchas was talking about the verse that God will bless you from Zion, from Zion, and you shall see the goodness of Jerusalem all the days of your life. And he explained what that verse meant according to uh, the deeper meanings of, of the Torah. Now, Rabbi Lazar now replies, and it has to do with the continuation of the verse. The continuation of the verse is, Ure vanim levanecha, shalom al Israel. You shall see children to, of your children, there shall be peace upon Israel. So kind of like Rabbi Lazar is hinting uh, a little bit to this union, to this connection that the grandfather, Rabbi Pinchas, has with, with him, with Rabbi Elazar, and, um, and he opens up with the following verse from a different place from, from Proverbs uh, 17. Patach Rabbi Elazar. Rabbi Elazar opened up the discourse and he says, that the crown of elders are their grandchildren. And the glory and the beauty of the children is their parents, is their elders. Banim haukimna. So what do children mean according to the Zohar? Children have to do with offsprings. And according to Kabbalah, offsprings come from the union of what we call Chabad, of Chachma and Bina uniting together in the form of Das and on the spiritual level, that is the that is the found that is the beginning of 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 all of life really stems from this union of what is called as Abba and Ima of the of the parents and the, the supernal parents. And they uh, they create uh, offsprings. And the offsprings over here are referred to as Chagas, as Chesed, Gevura, and Tefer, kindness, sternness, and harmony. And those are the children. Benevanim, so now what are the grandchildren over here? The grandchildren are the continuation of the spirit, which are Netzach, Hod, and Yesod, which is fortitude, humility, and foundation, which are the children of the children. In other words, according to Kabbalah, we have, we have a diagram. We have the, the tree of life of the 10th spirit. It starts off, as we said, with the Chabad union coming together. And then there is the bearing of the Chagas. Now Chagas also have children. So when Ches and Gevura unite together in, in harmony, so now they also have children and their children are now Netzach, Hod, and Yesod. Those are their grandchildren. Kemada Amar, as... It is written, V'chol banaich limudei Hashem, that it says in Isaiah 54, that all of your children are the uh, students of Hashem, of God. And limudei Hashem, and the students are re- referred to Netzach and Hod. Why? Because limud, limudei Hashem, in other words, the learning has to do with, with uh, they say that students are like, children and the ultimate level of, of a child is the fact that he's he's connected to a to, to the to the depth of of the parent and and that is that is more um uh played out when when a when a student now understands the 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 teacher and understands what what they have to say so then they're connected to him and that is the that is the that is netzach and hod which actually, according to, uh, to the Zohar, Netzach and Hod are where prophecy comes from. So, the, so, so they receive from, from these higher levels, and now, they, and then now Netzach, Netzach and Hod are, are the students that receive this, this higher level of consciousness of prophecy. Uchtiv, and it further says, in, in Eicha, 
B'nei Zion HaYekarim, that the children of Zion, the children of Zion, which Rabbi Pincha spoke about yesterday, and which is really, um, what, like we mentioned yesterday, that has to do with Yesod, it has to do with foundation. So the children, B'nei Zion HaYekarim, that Netzach and Hod are called Zion. Or the children of Zion. And Kemodat Amar, as it says, Tiferd Banim Avotam, that the glory of the children are their parents. Lomit Atran Benin Elabavan, that the children are only glorified through their parents, which are uh, the children is Chesed Gvura and Tiferet, are glorified through their union, through, through their lineage of where they came from, which is Chabad, which is Chachon Binayin Dat. Mikan Lifna, from here we learn, the Vnin lo mitatre, velo mishtakyan mishakyu de nachala, that the children, which are Chesed, Vur, and Tiferet, are not crowned, are not connected in the mind of the parents, which which refers to specifically uh, to the male and, fem- and female, and which is, according to Kabbalah, is the, there's the idea of, of uh, the birth comes from the feminine, from the Bina part of it, which specifically is Sod Iman. Only when the parents are blessed to have children. And, and the idea of the blessing to have children is that they receive their, um, their ability to have children from a higher place. And, and that is the root of, of having, of having uh, children in, in the first place, on, the, on a spiritual level as well, of course, as on a physical level. That the glory of the children is their parents because they are actually united they stem from the mind of the parents, and the parents uh, receive from, from a higher place, uh, which, which is called Ava, Ava and Ima. Now, up until now is what Rabbi Lazar um, says about the verse. Now, the story now ends off with, with a bit of a uh, dramatic uh, ending. Adahavu Azle Mata Idan Slota. Until while they were walking, they were walking and talking, and they were walking and, and, and saying these deep words of, of Torah. Nachtu Vitsalu. So then they got off of their donkeys and they prayed because it was the time, it was the time to pray. Adahavu Matzli, while they were praying, Kaftar Chad Chivya Beragloi de Chama de Rabbi Pinchas. There was a snake that surrounded himself. Uh, around the the calf of the donkey of Rabbi Pinchas, kafta vegaatre zimni. So the donkey uh, neighed uh, twice, and he kicked, tried to try to kick the the snake off of him. Butter the simut slotaba. Of course, they didn't pay attention to this in the mid in the midst of prayer. They probably didn't hear this in the midst of prayer. But after they p- finished praying, they realized what happened. Amar Rabbi Pinchas. Rabbi Pinchas says. Certainly, there is a um, uh, anguish which my uh, donkey has. Why does my donkey have anguish? So he says, da Why? Because I had to rush the donkey up earlier this morning because I was traveling. And I was speaking and I was thinking words of Torah. Of course, these, these tzaddikim were on a totally different caliber that they were constantly, constantly involved in the, in the thoughts, in the consciousness of Torah, in, of, in spirituality, in holiness, that wherever they went, they were, they were, a, a, they, they were a, a, a zoned in to, uh, to Torah. And what happened, Rabbi Pinchas says, And the donkey took me in a, in a dirty place. And in the dirty place, I had to stop from thinking words of Torah. It must have been some place that one is not allowed to think words of Torah. For example, one is not allowed to think words of Torah in a bathroom or in a place that, that smells um, like a bathroom or a place that's really dirty. So then it's not respectful to, to be in that place and, and, to, and, to, and to channel down in that place 
uh, were uh, even thoughts of Torah. And now since that happened, so now since the donkey did this and took me in, in, in that place, now the donkey is being um, punished in a sense. Kamu v'chamu chadchivya kater aragla. So then they actually saw what, what was happening. They saw that the snake was around it because apparently they only heard the donkey um, neighing. And now they saw that there's a snake around it. Amar Rabbi Pinchas, Rabbi Pinchas says to, said to the snake, Chivya, chivya, snake, snake, zil ve'ashar kutach. Go and, and un, unfoil yourself from the calf. Bekitufra dechura. And go back to the bottom of the hole which you came from. So apparently the snake took a little bit of time and didn't do it right away. Adahachi, while this was happening, itnasha chivya, the snake fell from the calf of the donkey. The nafal kafsire, kafsire, and it and it fell in pieces. It was just like it just completely like just cut up. It, be, it just automatically became cut up. Amar Rabbi Lazar. Rabbi Lazar says, So if so, God is so stringent with the words of the tzaddikim that he is that 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 he uh, cares about their honor, their glory so much, even from animals. An animal, the, the donkey didn't, you know, didn't go in, in the right way, but so the donkey got, got punished and the snake as well. Amar Lei, Rabbi Pinchas says, Certainly God is very stringent with tzaddikim and he's worried about their honor very, very much, but not their loan. And he, Guards them from all types of uh, all types of situations. Uvala osfalon kedusha kedushutayu, and God wants to add more holiness to their holiness, to their existing holiness. He wants to reach, wants them to reach higher levels. Behashta haychama al delo natar kedusha deli itzdar, and and since this donkey did not guard my holiness, so that's why the donkey was punished. Vedachivya shlicha avay. And the snake was sent from heaven in order to punish the donkey. Now, the continuation of this portion of the Zohar talks about how different, um, how God sends different messengers and different servants uh, in order to um, uh, to exact uh, his punishment and to make sure everything is everything is in line and and that and that um, that that tzaddikim uh, are are again guarded. And those that, that need to be punished are punished, but, but God, you, God has no, uh, there's, there's no specific method that God could, could uh, use uh, to, uh, you know, to implement whatever type of punishment that, that he desires. He could, use, he could use any types of animals, he could use any person, anything, and everything is ultimately to bring out uh, this, the, the glory of, of, of godliness. So, I was thinking, what is the connection between this, the beginning of this discussion between Rabbi Pinchas and Rabbi Lazar and the end of this story that come and came together? And really, it has to do with uh, the, the unity of what we said earlier about Zion, about Zion uh, drawing down the, the blessings from Zion into, into Jerusalem. And then, and then how the how the children are now reunited with with their root, with their with their source. Now that unity, that unity of Rabbi Pinchas and Rabbi Lazar, the two, the grandfather and the grandson, is 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 really the the unity of the midos of the of the uh, emanations of of Chagas and and Nahi, etc. and and Yesod, um, uniting back with with its source. Now, this uh, end of the, of the story over there uh, talked about how, you know, when, whenever somebody is, uh, is united with their source and there are, they're, doing their, they're doing what they're supposed to do, so then essentially all of creation is sent to serve him and everything that a person has is ultimately meant to serve that inner purpose, that inner, that, that inner purpose of, of being united uh, with the inner source, with the grandfather, with the with the parents, etc., 
and and God sends uh, all types of servants to make sure that that happens. And when it doesn't happen, so then um, so then uh, God makes sure to rectify that and to and He sends the the right servants uh, in order to do that. So may we all serve our inner uh, purpose in life, and may we only have uh, great messengers to constantly be by our side, helping us in that mission. Wishing every, everybody a great day.